Hi, welcome back. In this video, I want to walk you through the entire drawing process of this realistic portrait of Merlin Monroe. So let's get started. As always, these are the art supplies I'm going to use for this drawing and you can pause the video right here to note them down. I'm going to use this 250 GSM paper from my ordinary smooth surface sketchbook which is available in almost all the art stores or stationeries around the world. So you don't have to use any fancy paper for this specific drawing. And the drawing portion area is 9 cross 12 inches. I drew the outline using grid method and you can find the detailed step by step process from making the grid to outlining on my Patreon profile. Link is in the description. Before moving on to the shading process, let's mask the edges of the drawing paper using a masking tape to prevent graphite from spilling over the borders. Ok so now let's shade the background and I'm using my 2B graphite powder with a bigger size dry brush. If you don't have a graphite powder kit, you can make one at home by watching this video from the cards. I'm gradually layering the graphite and moving my brush in circular motions to avoid patchiness. During the outlining process, I've erased the outline from this portion. And now after adding a background, it turned out very patchy because the eraser I used had some kind of sticky residue. So first of all, I'm going over it using a tissue paper in circular motions. It has blended the base a little bit but it is still looking patchy. So now I am dabbing my kneaded eraser and picking up the excess graphite very carefully. Now as we have cleared most of the graphite, it's time to blend this portion and I'm using the same tissue paper I used earlier. I'm again moving my hand in circular motions to blend the graphite. After blending with a tissue paper, grab a 2B graphite powder and start layering it over this patchy area. Make sure not to use back and forth motions while adding this layer to avoid patchiness. When the same tone has been achieved in this left portion, now I'm going over the whole background using a bigger size draw brush and it will blend everything together giving the background a seamless effect. Some of the areas are still looking dull so I am adjusting them by layering graphite powder. And by the way you can get access to our premium content and support this channel through Patreon. You can sign up through different membership levels and get access to all the outlines and grid references etc. We have an ever growing library of hundreds of exclusive and real time tutorials. And you will also get access to 4 new tutorials every month. You can also post your artworks in our active community of patrons and participate in our weekly critique sessions where I give my honest and positive critiques on your artworks. So you can improve your skills and get better with your drawing. Visit the link in description and become a premium member today. It has always been my goal to provide free tutorials and information on drawing and art related tools to general public. And keeping with that theme, I would like to thank all these incredible individuals who backed our channel on Patreon last month. Their generous support enabled me to produce this free tutorial for all of you guys. So that's how we have achieved a beautiful, even and blended background. And now let's move on to the detailing process and I'm starting from this hair portion. I'm darkening the directional lines we have added earlier along with adding new ones using my 3B pencil. Make sure to change the length and direction of these strokes very carefully depending upon the area you are working on. The hair on the left part of the head has a wave for which I'm carefully adding mixture of concave and convex lines or strokes to achieve this wave pattern. Make sure to join these strokes together carefully so that it can look like one wave stroke instead of intersected ends. Also notice that I'm extending the previous strokes in their respective direction to create proper shape and look of hair clusters. As we move towards the left side, the hair strokes are becoming more straight as compared to the top portion. So I'm adding these darker and lighter strokes by moving my pencil in back and forth motions. Take your time while adding these intricate details as the deformed base will lead to deformed results. As the darker base in this section is done, now I'm adding highlights using my flat tip mono zero eraser. Make sure to clean the tip of your eraser more frequently while working on such darker areas as the graphite tends to stick to the tip making it dirty. And when you use the same dirty tip over the lighter areas, the excessive graphite from the tip will stick to the paper making it look uneven and patchy. So always clean the tip after every 3 or 4 strokes to increase its effectiveness. 
Keep on adding these curved strokes and lines in between the darker ones for this whole left portion. After adding the highlight, some of the darker details faded away. So I'm adjusting them by adding a few strokes in between the lighter ones using a sharp tip 3B pencil. This layering of darker and lighter strokes will create an illusion of hair overlapping each other. Now moving on to the front part of the hair and when we look at the reference image, we can see that there is a band of bright highlights near the forehead portion. And these highlights are making the hair cluster look shiny and curved. So I'm adding the small curved strokes in between the darker ones just like the way I did for the left portion. You can always go back and adjust the highlights where required. This top right portion has denser white highlights which are making the hair look shiny. So I'm creating such an effect by reducing distance between the strokes. Make sure to keep the direction of hair in mind while adding these strokes to avoid deformity. Now I'm adding these small individual strokes for the flyaway hair over this whole top portion and it will make the hair look more realistic and 3D. I'm going back and adjusting the highlights using an electric razor where required. You can skip this step if your highlights are looking as fine as we need here. Okay, so let's move on to the forehead portion and as we can see in the reference image that it is very smooth and barely has any texture. So to create such smooth skin, I'm using my B pencil and adding a base layer by maintaining a constant pressure over my pencil. Also, we can see that the sides of the forehead have some shadows. So I'm layering graphite by keeping the pressure relatively higher. I'm also adding some strokes for the starting portion of the hairline as well. Now when the 3D base is done, it's time to blend it and I'm using my bigger size draw brush. Now to make it even more smooth, I'm using a soft tissue paper and again going over the whole forehead in circular motions. And look how smooth it has started to look, just like the reference image. Okay, so moving on to the eyes portion and first of all, I'm creating a 3D base by using my favorite graphite layering method using a P-pencil. Notice that I'm also adding these slant strokes for the directional lines of the eyebrows. I've added a light base layer over the whole eyelid and now layering the graphite over the areas which are darker in the reference image. I'm keeping the pressure high for the darker areas and gradually decreasing it to create a gradient effect. It is very important to practice pressure technique because constant pressure will only give you harsh edges between darker and lighter texture. I'm following the similar process of adding a base layer for the left eye. When the base layer in both the eyes is done, it's time to blend it and I'm using my medium sized dry brush and going over the whole area. Now let's top off the eyebrows with some individual hair strokes in random directions to make them look more natural. You can use a 3B pencil for this purpose. Try to flick your pencil in one go to achieve the hair stroke without any blunt ends. And also avoid adding uniform strokes of same length and thickness. It will make the area look unrealistic and flat. For the eyes, I'm creating a sleek eyeliner look and also filling the pupil later on using 3B pencil. After analyzing the reference image, I'm also adding these strokes for the eyelashes by flicking my pencil in one go. I'm repeating the similar process for the left eye as well. Okay, so now let's blend this layer and as always, I'm using my medium sized dry brush for this purpose. Now it's time to add life to the eyes and I'm using my mono zero laser to add the required highlights. If we look at the reference image, we can see that there are some bright highlights in between the eyelashes. So to mimic such an effect, I'm switching my eraser with an electric one and adding the small dots of random sizes very carefully. You can also use the same electric razor without turning it on to add softer highlights. The texture is looking a bit sharp to me so I'm dabbing my needle razor over the area to make it look a bit subtle. Ok now it's time to make the eye look watery and shiny and I'm adding these small dots on the pupil and inner corner respectively. The process for the left eye is pretty much the same. So I'm following the similar step as I did for the right one. Moving on to the face portion and as always, I'm darkening the outline first and then adding the base layer later on using a pressure technique. As the left side is relatively darker, so I'm using the same 3B pencil. But when we look at the right side, we can see it is relatively lighter. So I'm switching towards my HP graphite powder and layering it using my bigger size draw brush. I'm layering more powder on the shadowed portions and using very less amount of powder for the lighter areas to achieve the required depth. When we look at the reference, we can see that the skin is very smooth. 
and has no visible texture. So to achieve such an effect, I'm going over the whole area with a tissue paper. I'm thoroughly blending the base layer until I achieve the required blended base. Moving on to the lips and as always, I'm darkening the outline using a 6B pencil and then shifting towards my 8P pencil and filling in the whole portion using variable pressure. I'm using the same 8P pencil to add depth around the nose or where required. Now blend this whole portion using a medium sized draw brush to achieve a smooth finish. Some of the areas are still missing shadows. So I'm going back and forth with my tools to add the required depth. When you're satisfied with the base layer, start blending it using a tissue paper. I'm adding a base layer in the left hair cluster as well using an 8P pencil. The mole is looking a bit white to me so I'm lightly dabbing my mono zero eraser and adjusting its size. Now it's time to add the highlights and as we can see in the reference image that they are super soft and subtle. So to mimic such an effect, I'm firstly creating base highlights using my kneaded eraser with a round surface and dabbing it over these brighter parts of the face. As you know that the texture of a kneaded eraser is kind of sticky. So make sure to apply very light pressure to prevent it from sticking to the paper or messing up the shade. Okay, so now let's add some dimension to the face and I'm using my clean tip perfection eraser to pick up the excess graphite from this cheekbone. I'm applying higher pressure on the areas which are brighter and then gradually reducing it where we need softer highlights. And make sure to clean your perfection eraser more oftenly while working on these areas to achieve better results. I am also lightening the tip of the nose and see how the facial features have started to look 3D in just a few minutes. This left side of the face has a very bright highlight so I'm applying higher pressure on my pencil to achieve similar results. I'm going over the brighter areas of the face to make them even more prominent and 3D. If you look at the reference image, we can see that the left side of the nose has a very bright highlight. So I'm adding this highlight using Mono Zero Eraser. Before adding the highlight around the upper lip, I'm firstly adjusting the outline using a B pencil and then adding thin strokes with a very light pressure to create softer highlights. The lips are still looking dull to me so I'm adjusting it by adding the required shadows using B and then 8P pencil respectively. Okay so now let's make the lips shiny and I'm using my sharp tip electric eraser and adding these small dots and strokes very carefully. And look how these strokes added dimension to the lips. I'm also using a perfection eraser to add softer highlights on the lower lip. Now let's add highlights over the teeth and I'm using my flat tip mono zero eraser first and adding this bright stroke at the bottom and then flicking my eraser upwards to create a smooth gradient. I'm following the similar process for the rest of the teeth as well. You can always adjust the corners if required using a B pencil. Now to make them more shiny, I'm topping off some of the previous highlights with some brighter ones using an electric eraser. Now moving on to the left hair cluster and I'm following the similar steps of adding lighter hair stroke using mono zero eraser, just like the way I did previously. Keep on relating to the reference image to make sure you are on the right track. The process for the right side is also pretty much the same. I'm firstly darkening and adding some strokes in the direction of flow of the hair using an 8P pencil and then adding a base layer using an 8P graphite powder. Also notice that I'm layering more powder on the darker areas to achieve a 3D base. As I'm holding a brush right now so I decided to add the base layer in the shoulder portions as well. I'm using an HP graphite powder with a bigger size draw brush and layering the powder in all the shadowed portions first. You can layer more graphite powder over the areas that are relatively darker using a medium size draw brush. You will have better control over it. When the base layer is done, start darkening the necklace and add a pitch black base using an 8P pencil. I'm again going over some of the areas with a dry brush to blend the powder thoroughly. Now to make the area even more smooth and even, I'm using tissue paper and moving my hand in circular motions. Now coming back to the right hair cluster and I'm adding these lighter tone hair strokes using a mono zero eraser by following the similar technique we have used earlier for the top portion. And make sure to keep your mono zero eraser clean and sharp at all times during this entire erasing process. You can rub it on a rough and textured surface like this to clean the tip and get sharp corners for thin lines and highlights. Moving on to the neck and when we look at the reference image we can see that the right side has some skin folds. 
So to mimic such an effect, I'm adding these strokes using a P pencil and then blending them afterwards. To lightly lift up the excess graphite, I'm using my kneaded eraser and tapping it over the lighter areas and then using a perfection eraser and creating a relatively brighter highlight. I'm also adding this highlight on the left portion of the neck by following the similar process as I did earlier. Now moving on to the necklace and let's make it look realistic. And for that, I'm using my electric razor with a sharp tip. I'm adding a mixture of small dots and strokes to create the required pattern. Okay, now moving on to the left side and I'm firstly defining the shoulder portion and then lifting up the excess graphite from the clothes using a perfection eraser. And now to create a fur texture, I'm flicking my perfection eraser upwards and adding strokes very carefully. This flicking of the eraser will create strokes with thin and soft ends. And make sure to keep the length and direction of these strokes variable because too much uniformity will take the essence of realism away. The dirty tip of the perfection eraser has created some patchiness. So I'm picking up the graphite using a normal eraser. And as you can see, there is a sharp barrier formed due to shade difference. So to blend it with the rest of the texture, I'm adding fur strokes using mono zero eraser just like the way I added earlier. And these thin and sharp strokes will effectively blend the barrier and make the fur look more detailed and realistic. For the shoulder portion, I'm repeating the similar process of picking up the excess graphite first using erasers and then blending the area with the tissue paper if required to achieve a smooth finish. And keep on adding the softer highlights onto all the areas which are raised and have highlights in the reference image. And with this last step, we are done with this realistic portrait of Merlin Montreux. Creating these free tutorials needs a significant amount of time and energy. So if you found this one valuable, please show your support by liking this video. Your support keeps me inspired to bring you more creative content. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.